us on a night of pompous and circumstance from Palm Beach, Florida. You know, the final votes for last week's midterm elections are still being counted, but the race for 2024 has already begun. Donald Trump made a big announcement tonight at Mar-a-Lago, surrounded by dozens of his closest friends and thousands of classified documents. And here it was, <laughs> the moment none of us have been waiting for. Wow. Wow. That is some group of people, thousands. So nice, thank you very much. That's really nice, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially announcing that Eric is potty trained. You know, it's not easy to potty train when you're almost 40. It's an accomplishment. <laughs> the other big announcement is happening after we tape our show, but by all accounts, Trump is expected to officially launch yet another campaign for president in a bid to become the first American to lose the popular vote three times in a row. There was some speculation that he might be announcing something else tonight. You know, there have been a lot of times Trump said something was gonna be big, and it wasn't. Um, just ask Stormy Daniels. <laughs> Sadly, that did not appear to be the case. Trump has been uh, reportedly interviewing staffers for his campaign, which is fun to imagine. This is the only job interview where they want to make sure you are crazy before they hire you. <laughs> they say that uh, he's looking for more than one campaign manager. Instead of just one main person, he wants to have multiple people because he has a tendency to fire campaign managers. <laughs> he guess he wants them to compete. I don't know, that should, you know, this guy doesn't want to be president. He wants to host The Apprentice again. That is the show. <laughs> Meanwhile, many prominent Republicans are moving to distance themselves from Trump after the midterm election. A group of current and former Republican governors had a meeting this morning. Chris Christie got a big round of applause for a speech blasting Trump. He said Trump weighed the party down across all three election cycles. Trump was like, I weighed the party down. <laughs> You're the one banned from the hometown buffet, buddy. But a lot of Republicans wish that this monster they helped create would go away, but he just keeps coming back. He's like herpes. Once your party has him, you can't get rid of him. All you can do is try to shorten the outbreaks. But some Republicans are standing by him. Mike Lindell was invited to the announcement tonight. He brought pillows to Mar-a-Lago. There are a lot of great thinkers in the attendance tonight, including uh, Stop the Stealer from January 6th named Ali Alexander. This guy bragged on Truth Social, I received an invitation to Mar-a-Lago, November 15th, God bless America. Ali is an extreme right winger who claims he has ties to the Proud Boys and the Oats Keepers. He's also known as the Urkel of Treason. And uh, <laughs> this is who he invites to the announcement. This is, uh, this Ali guy, same person who just the other day claimed he could fix the outcome of the Arizona governor's race using the power of time travel. Even if Kerry was going to lose, I would will it into existence. The reason why the New World Order wants you to focus on fiction stories about machines is they don't want you to know that everyone has access to time travel. I could prove that I've time traveled before. I'd start. Ali had traveled many years into the distant future only to find out he's a virgin there too. <laughs> now, why is it... He got invited to Mar-a-Lago. One guy who wasn't invited to Mar-a-Lago is Trump's former right-hand job, I mean, man, Mike Pence. <laughs> Today of all days was the day Pence's mildly anticipated memoir came out. He sat for an hour-long interview with David Muir of ABC News last night, during which he recounted this dramatic exchange he had with a member of his Secret Service detail as the storm Trumpers who wanted to hang him were closing in on the Capitol. The Secret Service came in shortly thereafter and told me I need to leave the building again. And I said, I'm, I'm not leaving. But when my lead agent, Tim Gables, who is a, a great public servant, came in and said, sir, we've got to get you out of the building now, um, I stuck my finger in his chest and said, you're not hearing me. I'm not leaving. And that's how my finger got broken. <laughs>
Mike Pence delivers every line like he's starring in a dinner theater production of A Few Good Men. I don't believe he's ever stuck his finger in anything, ever. So David Murray asked Pence if Trump ever said he was sorry for almost getting him killed, uh, which you think he might, and, um, well, you will believe the answer he gave to that. Did he apologize for putting your life and your wife's life, your daughter's life, in danger? Um... Not in so many words, but in sentiment he did, David. So the answer is no, he did not. He did, he did. Pence also shed light on what went down when they had the, the first conversation uh, five days after the insurrection. He hadn't heard from Trump for five days, and then they met. And this, you can tell, Mike Pence is a man who really knows Donald Trump. I told him he should turn to Jesus right now. <laughs> Believing in my heart that he could find the same comfort I was finding. And what did he say? In that moment, he did not respond. <laughs> Come on, it's, can you imagine telling Donald Trump you should turn to Jesus? Even Jesus is like, don't tell him to turn to me. I want <laughs> no part of any of this. Then Pence told Trump he was going to pray for him, and Trump said, don't bother. <laughs> This is the book, by the way. I don't know if you've seen it. It makes a great stocking stuffer. You can hang it on the mantle, just like Mike Pence almost was. And, or if reading isn't your thing, you can listen to the audio book. We parted amicably when our service to the nation drew to a close. In the months that followed, we spoke from time to time. But when the president returned to the rhetoric he was using before that tragic day, I decided it would be best to go our separate ways. But by that evening, I'd changed my mind. I missed being chastened by a stronger man. I asked mother's permission to leave without washing my face, and I broke into a vigorous jog. My loafers carried me all the way down Pennsylvania Avenue. I bustled briskly through the North Portico, and with my remaining strength, gently pushed open the oval door and declared, Mr. President, you complete me. The president said nothing. He continued stuffing Eric's pants with classified documents. I was wrestled out into the rain by the president's head of security, Vinnie Gabagutz Stromboli. I cried that night, forsaken by the man to whom I'd surrendered my testicles only four short years ago. Wow, this is a, I mean, this is a heavy book. I might even have to read it. So, uh, meanwhile, down in, uh, in Arizona, a former local news anchor and Trump worshiper Carrie Lake has been defeated in the race for governor by the Democrat Katie Hyde. Um, of course, Carrie Lake has not conceded the election. She's still asking to speak to the manager. And when the race was called, she tweeted, Arizonans know BS when they see it. I guess so. They seem to have figured you out. Um, so yesterday, she, uh, she appeared on the uh, OAN channel, this right-wing network, to offer this delusional look at her future. What position do you expect to find yourself at the beginning of next week? I think, Daniel, that we're going to know before then who the winner is. I already know who the winner is, and the winner is me. <laughs> it's a real Donna Trump, this one. And by the way, I want to get another look at the, the reporter, because is there a, a nine-year-old Culkin brother we didn't know about? <laughs> the Senate race in Georgia is headed to a runoff, which means we have three more weeks to try to figure out what the hell Herschel Walker is saying. If we were ready for the green agenda, I'll raise my hand right now, but we're not ready right now. So don't let them fool you like this is a new agenda. This is not a new agenda. We're not prepared. We're not ready right now. What we need to do is keep having those gas guzzling cars, because we got the good emission under those cars. We're doing the best thing that we can, but we need help. We need help, and those other people not helping us, China not helping us, India not helping us, but yet we're going to do it all because they're spending your money. That's right. Well, you can't argue with the facts, folks. It's just, you know... I might have to ask him to co-host the Oscars with me because I just want to hear him say the Oscar goes to the Fablements, you know? Oh, speaking of awards, over the weekend, uh, here in Los Angeles, there was an award ceremony. The Critics' Choice Association had a celebration of Latino cinema and television, and a major honor went to a beloved and familiar face. Please join me in welcoming the best damn sidekick, comedian, actor, and all-around great guy, Guillermo Rodriguez. <laughs> Wow, 
congratulations, Guillermo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How did this, how did this happen? Uh, well, I work hard, Jimmy. I know you do. <laughs> no one works harder than you. Guillermo won the Special Honoree Award for his work here at the show. Was it, uh, did you beat out Guillermo del Toro? Because I saw, was it like most favorite Guillermo or what were they doing there? No, I, I beat a lot of incredible people. Many people don't know this. Guillermo really was our parking lot security guard. Um, we didn't feel safe with him guarding the lot, so we moved him in here. <laughs> thank you to the Greatest Source Award. Also, I want to say thank you to Jimmy Kimmel for changing my life. You know, all the boss will fire you if you're sleeping in the car while you're working. Yeah, that's true, by the way. And uh, <laughs> many other, yes, many businesses will, many bosses will fire you if they find you sleeping <laughs> in, you. in their car. But not, that's not my philosophy. Listen, Jimmy told me, Guillermo, always be nice to everybody, always with directors, producers, writers, with anybody. It doesn't matter the colors, it doesn't matter who they are, always be nice with everybody. And also, I don't wanna get in trouble, so I wanna say thank you to my beautiful wife right there. Yeah. That's your wife, that's your wife? What happened? <laughs> she looks. <laughs> I've known you almost 20 years. I never heard that noise before. <laughs> You're the best, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and before he wrapped it up, Guillermo had one more uh, group to thank. And also, I want to say thank you to uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez, Salma Hayek, <laughs> and Sofia Vergara, and Eva Mendes for choosing me the sexy Latino in 2022. Thank you. In Thank you, everybody. Uh, let me tell you something. That made almost as much sense as Herschel Walker. Bye, ah, it's OK. Well, congratulations. Thank you, uh, Jimmy. To Guillermo on being a Latino for 2020. Thank